Hello everyone, welcome back to a new tutorial. Uh, before I get started, uh, just wanted to let you know that after going through the whole process of uh, putting together the presentation I'm about to show, I discovered that I've already solved this problem uh, before or I've talked about it, uh, but uh, in a different way. I've done it using the, uh, using the differential equation uh, method. Uh, this time we're going to do the same problem. I'll try to put a link for the other video so you can look at both cases. You'll find a lot of similarities between these two methods. Uh, in general, we're trying to derive the shear force and bending moment equations for the beam shown in the figure. So this time we're going to do it, but in a slightly different way, particularly finding the equations and then we we'll, uh, can uh, continue to drawing the shear and bending moment diagrams and finding the maximum values of both the shear force and the bending moment and where are they located on the beam shown. So we have a beam, a simply supported beam AB with a length L and a, a load, a triangular load uh, having a value of 0 at A and a value of W at B and it's linear linearly varying load. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the solution. So, step one, we find the reactions at the supports. Uh, we have two reactions. We have AY and BY. To find the reactions, we concentrate any distributed load. And if we do this, we will concentrate the uh, load by finding the area of the triangle and knowing that the uh, acting uh, uh, load, the concentrated load in this case, will act at a distance L over 3 from the right and 2L over 3 from the left. Then we simply go ahead and do the summation of the forces in the y direction, which will lead us to AY plus BY equals to WL over 2. And now, and of course, uh, that's basically the area of the triangle, meaning the WL over 2 is the area of the triangle. Okay, next step, we sum the moments about one of the supports. I chose uh, support A. So, summation of the moments about A with a counterclockwise uh, direction to be positive, set that equals to 0. We have BY multiplied by L minus WL over 2 multiply by 2L over 3, set that equals to 0, and we get BY equals WL over 3. Now in the next step, we substitute back into the equation obtained from step 1 to solve for the AY. So we have AY plus WL over 3 equals WL over 2, and if I solve for AY, I will get WL over 6. The next step is to find the equation of the triangle load. We have this triangle load represented by a straight line, so we need basically to find the equation of this straight line. How can we do this? Since it's a straight line, uh, since it's a straight line, it follows that y equals mx plus b, but y in our case is wx. So the equation, the general equation of the line is wx equals mx plus b. Now we have two points. We have a point uh, x0 with a w equals 0 and x at l with a w equals w. So at x equals 0, wx equals 0, that leads to b equals to 0. And x equals l, wx equals w, so we can solve for m, which is w over l. So now we have a full equation for the line, which is wx over L. Okay, now we try to cut the beam at the distance x from the left support and define the internal shear force and moment. This is the figure. We have Vx, Mx, and we have of course uh, the support reaction, WL over 6, and now we, ha we need to concentrate this uh, segment of the triangle load. So we need to find the area of this triangle. So we have the 
one half times the base which is x times the height and if you look closely at the height it's wx over l that's basically the equation of the wx that's why we needed the equation for that line so again concentrating this load will give me one half times x times wx over l will lead to, will lead to wx squared over 2l okay now we will use the equilibrium equations the regular equilibrium equations to solve for the internal loading so we have summation of the forces in the y equals to zero we have wl over six minus wx square over 2l minus vx set that equal to zero and if i can solve for vx i will get wl over 2 multiplied by 1 third minus x squared over L squared okay same thing goes for the moment take the sum summation of the moments about point x and again the counterclockwise to be positive we have mx plus wx squared over 2L multiplied by x over 3 minus WL over 6 multiplied by x and if I solve for mx I will get this expression WLx over 6 times 1 minus x squared over L squared okay here's the point here for, uh, just a quick check uh, uh, we know if the support is a hinge or a roller with no concentrated moment acting directly at the support with any kind of loading in between for a beam the moments at these supports at these end supports should be zero okay so if we assume x to be zero that's the at support a if we uh, substitute back into the mx equation of course we can see that uh, wl times zero <laughs> makes the whole expression to be zero so mx is zero and what about at distance x equals to L which is at support uh, B uh, looking inside uh, the parentheses we have 1 minus x squared over L squared so if I substitute uh, L instead of x in this expression I'll have 1 minus L squared over L squared that's a 1 so 1 minus 1 is a 0 0 multiplied by the whole thing is a 0 so now we can sense that this moment makes sense all right so the next step is to draw the shear and bending moment diagram how can we do this we have an equation this time okay so you, you can use excel mathematica matlab to produce a graphic representation of the v and m equation in my case i use mathematica but i uh, assumed w to be 2 and l to be 10 just to get uh, some results because uh, Mathematica needs some uh, uh, Mathematica can only draw uh, the um, the graphs with only one variable or two variables in 2D but in our case I wanted uh, 1D graph so I needed to uh, let X to be the unknown and assume values for W, L and so on so for the shear uh, diagram we can see that dotted line represent the, uh, the location of the beam so with a w to l equals 10 I get this uh, uh, form of uh, shear diagram we can see it's not a horizontal line it's not a straight line it's a second degree uh, par parabola and for the moment diagram we have again the dotted line represents the location of the beam and the bending moment uh, diagram as shown uh, is of a third degree okay now let's take a look at the places where the uh, shear force and bending moment diagrams are interesting uh, the values I mean for the shear force and the bending moment so we need to define the maximum and minimum shear force uh, in design courses or in, in if, if you are a designer you are interested to know the uh, value for the shear force and the bending moment diagrams at certain points so you can accomplish an optimum design so if, if we have the graph you can find from the graph the, sh uh, the minimum and the maximum shear forces again if you have the graph you can find the minimum and the maximum bending moment uh, 
uh, from that graph okay but for shear for example to start with we need to find the maximum shear force at an absolute value okay and we find this from just by looking at the graph it's located at the right support okay so that's simple just by the graph but for the minimum one the minimum meaning the zero value where does the shear equal to zero okay how do I know this simply by taking the shear equation set it equal to zero and solve for X so we have this equation set it equal to zero solve for X I'll get X equals L over the square root of 3 so if I know the length of the beam I divide it by a square root of 3 I'll find the X where the shear value is equal to zero okay as for the bending moments we we've seen that the minimums are located at the supports which are uh, uh, who have the value of zero but what about the maximum the maximum one we know that the maximum moment takes place when the shear is zero okay and the shear is zero we've shown that it's at x equals l over 3 so if I take this value of x equals l over 3 and substitute it back into the moment equation this time I'll get a value for the maximum moment that's m max equals m of l over uh, square root of 3 substitute it in this expression if I solve for m max I will get w l squared over 9 the square times the square root of 3 okay so to summarize uh, we have support equations a y and b y as shown we have shear force equation as shown the bending moment uh, equation as shown uh, maximum shear force at right support and the minimum shear force at x equals l over 3 and the maximum bending moment at zero shear, uh, shear location which is at x equals l over square root of 3 and it's equal to m equals w l square over 9 times the square root of 3 okay I hope that uh, helped and I'll see you guys in future tutorials thank you for